Yo, your boy B Lo, do or die. Forever Entertainment. You know how we do it already. Grind TV. Yiddy! Fuck with your boy Floyd. You're now watching Urban Grind TV. Let's get it. Hi, my name is Ashley Armland, and you're watching Urban Grind TV. What's going on? It's T.L. Williams, and you are now watching Urban Grind TV. This your girl, Amani K versus Spaz, so Spaz versus Amani K, and you're watching Urban Grind TV. Yeah, this is King D's when you watching Urban Grind TV. What's up? This is Chanel Chu, and you're watching Urban Grind TV. King of the trap, man. King of the kitchen bowl. King, you watching Urban Grind TV? What's up? It's the Queen of Rhythm and Trap, Dottie Stacks, and you are now watching Urban Grind TV. Let's get it! Yo, what up, man? It's your boy Away, and you are now tuned in to Urban Grind TV, you dig? Yo, it's your boy Ill Hit Up, Mr. All Yeah, y'all already know what it is, and you watching Urban Grind TV. back on urban grind tv and today we have our amazing chef who feeds us every wednesday miss celebrity chef herself tawana divine how you doing today i'm doing well and yourself <laughs> doing good y'all she didn't came in here she got her hair good she got the face beat and we both do look at us <laughs> so you a celebrity chef how has that been like what has that journey been like for you along the road you was just talking to me before but like let's give the people a little bit info on that well it's seriously been a dream because i started off in corporate running a school working for an investment firm um but that didn't fulfill me mm -hmm. like seriously it wasn't about the money working a nine to five i didn't love what i was doing and um i was kind of forced into cooking but okay. i can seriously say that it, it is fulfilling i have put the cart before the horse, so to speak, because I call myself celebrity chef because everything that it entails. Okay. I mean, everything that I'm doing in my life, the things I blog. We, we speaking it into existence, basically, is what she's saying. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, the people that I cook for and the experiences that I have with the food, mm -hmm. it's, it's been amazing, really. I can honestly say that your meals definitely fulfill my appetite and everybody in here. Is there anything that's coming up for you that you want to tell the people about? Yes, I'm actually working on two cooking shows, a series of cookbooks, Ooh. a podcast. I've been commanded to update my YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so, And then I have an online cooking course that I'm working on that's going to teach teenagers how to cook at home online. Okay, so uh, there's no excuse why you ain't cooking. Even if your mom and daddy at work, you can learn how to cook through Miss Tawana's <laughs> uh, YouTube channel. And then earlier we were talking about some of your favorite meals. Ronnie was over here trying to get in on, on some of your secrets. Mm -hmm. What's some of your favorite meals you like to cook? Well, I love to um, make jambalaya. I do a four meat jambalaya, which has crawfish, shrimp, and some other things I'm not going to mention. <laughs> but that is one of my top sellers, as well as my jerk chicken sliders. Mm -hmm. The components, each one has its own flavor, and I've been told that it is a serious bite. So I enjoy cooking a lot of the things that are my best sellers, but for the most part, I would say the, um, the jambalaya. Okay. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share with the people, or you just want everybody to stay tuned right now? Well, I do want to mention that um, my meal prep is picked up. I do a low-calorie meal prep that um, with meals are 500 calories or less, mm -hmm. and um, I've helped people lose up to 30 pounds in two months. Okay. So if they're serious about losing weight, they need to inbox me. 
Chef says she helping with those New Year's resolutions in the gym, y'all. So for one last time, can you tell the people where they can find you at all your platforms and social media? Well, on all platforms, I can be found. Um, Divine Tree says two E's and one Z. And then my phone number is 708-495-8867. Well, thank you once again. I can't wait to eat. It's a secret. I told her, don't tell me. I want to see what we have in the day. So once again, I'm Aja. You brought an Urban Grind TV. So that with the chef, Tawana Divine, and I'm in the house with Urban Grind TV. Urban Grind TV. 20 seasons, 10 years. <laughs> yep. On Urban Grind Radio. Hey, 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 y'all. It's Ronnie Lyle. Welcome back to Urban Grind TV. I have a very distinguished guest with us today. I'm going to let him introduce himself. What's up? My name Nine. What's going on, Nine? Welcome to Urban Grind. So tell us a little bit about yourself, man. What do you do? Uh, I rap. Um, I make, I write songs and I perform. That's awesome. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is uh, you listed perform as a separate thing aside from rap and writing songs and stuff. Why is that? Um, I feel like if you can rap without a performance, it's just like playing chess without a queen piece. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't got no performance, nobody's going to want to listen to what you're saying. But if you can get up there and, you know what I'm saying, move yeah. and have a good performance, they're going to listen to you more because yeah. they're watching you. Yeah, I get that. Like, I mean, I think we learned that you know, watch Michael Jackson perform, right? Like, you know, yeah, that's, that's a good way to put it. So, okay, so explain to me, the first time you performed, the first time you really performed a piece, how'd it feel? It felt, it felt, it felt good. It felt good to just let, see everybody, like, the reaction you can get from your thoughts mm -hmm. is great. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay, so tell me a little bit more about your process, man. How do you, how do you get, how do you get a song going? Um, see, me, I'm basically, like, I go off emotion. So, like, however I'm feeling at the time, I'll find a beat, and a beat talks, and you got to know how to read the beat. Mm -hmm. If you can read a beat, you can write a song. So, however I'm feeling, I read the beat, and boom, the song come out like that. That's, that's amazing. So, so, so the beat, like, it, where, where, does the beat from, where, do, where does the beat come from? Where do you find it? You know, sometimes people will send you a beat. You can get on YouTube. Right. It's all type of ways you get a beat. But it's a, it's a, I call it a box. It's a special box. I said it. Like, when I'm, like, sometimes I go into, like, when I'm writing a song, I go deeper. You got to go into that box to get the deeper stuff. So, you know, that's how I write my songs, though. That's awesome, man. I, I wish I wish I had that kind of talent where, like, you know, it's like you look inside and you got, you got it. You yeah. got it, right? Yeah. Uh, but, okay, so so where, where are you going from here? What's what's the next step? Uh, my next step is the top. I'm trying to be somewhere in the Benz or Bentley or something, <laughs> something iced out, you know. Some, yeah, I'm trying to go to the top. There we go, man. We, you well on your way there, man. I'm, I hope to see you there. Uh, let our audience know a little bit about where they can find you and what you got coming up. Uh, well, first, I just dropped the mixtape. My mixtape, Street Crab 1, the mixtape just dropped. It's on YouTube. It'll be on all uh, all platforms, like two weeks. But you can go um, type in 9, that's the number 9, I-N-E, and then type in Street Crab 1. So Street Crab, C-R-E-D, then 1. It'll pop up. Um, I got videos coming out. I just made a video to um, Lil Dirt, The Voice. It's a remix. I made a video called The Soul. Go check it out. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you all for joining us. And remember, when you're on the grind, you watch Urban Grind. Yo, I'm Nine. You watching Urban Grind TV. Urban Grind TV. 20 seasons, 10 years. <laughs> yep. On Urban Grind Radio. Thanks for clicking on the link. My name is Wally Locker III. I'm the executive producer of Urban Grind Television and author of Music Is My Business, a startup strategy guide to the music business. I've been in the industry for over 18 years, working with artists, entertainers, producers, record executives, and more. I put together a brand new strategy guide just for you on how to navigate the music business. I'm going to talk about your vision, about your commitments, about your dreams building the supreme team, and more. Also, how to fund your business. So all you need to do is hit the link below, put in your email address. We're going to send you the newsletter. We're going to give you some free bonus content, and you also got an exclusive offer. It's all free. Just click on the link below, put in your email address, and get in tune. It's Urban Grind TV. Music is my business. Let's go. Yeah! Uh, yeah. SK. Yeah.
Nice. I mean, that's how I look at it. You're gonna do whatever you do. It's totally up to you. What do you believe in? Don't act like you don't know. It's a no on the track. I didn't set up in a cell alone. People change, they ain't answer phones. Now I'm up, I'm at the top alone. I see money turn to real to foes. You sold on your man, and you know you wrong. I smoke the blood to make me think right. Pay attention, them niggas don't kill right. See niggas die, I can't eat right. Couldn't even cry, I was traumatized. Shout out to the streets, that's what made me. I'm lil' now, but ain't no safety. These rappers trash, that shit crazy. I'm making noise, nah, they hate me. You say your money low, right? And you kinda broke, right? Get up off your ass and go and see what that stove like. I was fucked up up in my past, but that's my old life. Damn, they got stuck up in that pussy, cause that whole type. Please don't try to tweak with me. Got this 30 on my lap, and I'm tripping, I'm high. That's not enough. Make her hold my drugs. Now she looking all stuck. I'm posted with my dog. You posted with your must. Niggas get stupid. He gon' run up on his block. Handle business. I handle it well. I was speaking facts and straight out of hell. Pillow talking niggas. Yeah, I know he'll tell. Keys, that's my blood. And I know he gon' drill. Went fed and I didn't have a bell. Stuck some real killers up in my cell. Ten toes down so you know I can't fail. Blood on my mind so you know I'ma kill Please don't try to tweak with me Got this 30 on my lap and I'm tripping I'm high off ecstasy The came to all of the streets Now the people gon' believe in me I'm the soul of the streets Now the people gon' remember me Most people never think about what they're going to do if they have a fire. I mean, you don't think about it until it happens. At 24-7 Secured Board Up, they provide the relief and the services you need when it does happen. Listen, if it's a flood, a fire, graffiti damage, broken windows, roof cover-ups, temporary fencing, whatever, 24-7 Secured Board Up provides experience, caring, and compassionate services to ease your mind during that stressful period. 24-7 Secured Board Up is the number one preferred company by most townships, villages, police, and fire departments in the metropolitan area. Listen, write their number down. Look, you never know when you're going to need it, right? It's 800-214-2399. 800-214-2399. Or search for them online for more details. It's 24-7 Secured Board Up, all right? 24-7 Secured Board Up. They're there when you need them.
for a joyride fit for royalty, you drive a Chrysler 300. It'll make you feel like royalty, and that's why you drive a Chrysler 300. Hell, dude, been in my car? Come here! Hey, it's your boy A Book Carter. We are back to the award winning Urban Grand Radio. How you feeling? Are you good? I'm dope, man. I'm feeling good. How's that that rose? Man, look, man. Rose, the birthday bottles, man. man I felt like Point Break. Hey, you remember the movie Point Point Break? I'm on certain boards. Yeah, okay, man. so we, we got a we got a, a dope guest in the building. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 in tune with him, man. But I, I want him to let y'all know who he is, man. We about to dig in deep. Man. It's magnificent people. Magnum for short. What's happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. The, the magnificent people. So, okay, wait. So, that's the whole name and you abbreviated to Magnif? All right. So, originally, the name was Magnificent Sunray. I'll give you a quick breakdown, right? Okay. So, I spent about maybe 15 years or so growing up in Humboldt Park, right? So, the Sunray is actually a translation. Ray is spelled R-E-Y, which means king. Sun is like, you know, what you see in the sky, you know, hopefully every day, you know, shine like the sun. That's and then the Magnificent came from my last name. But over time, I just shortened it up to Magnif just to make it easier to roll off the tongue, if you will. You know, it's, you know, I swear, man, like, it's, it's, it, this this artistry that we possess in our city, right, you give me these hard New York vibes. And that that's not a bad thing. That's like such a great, great compliment. Because sometimes I used to look at New York as like the essence of uh our like our genre urban hip hop before it took a twist and before they started saying the South took over. It's yeah. so, like the whole way like the like you talk the pronunciation, like you give me this hard brook non swag, like the <laughs> the locks, you know what I'm saying? Big type. What do you what do you think your music is is on? I mean, you know, I'm Chicago for sure. Definitely, up, definitely. up and down, native, all that. But man, no cap, like I definitely had a lot of influence, you know, from New York as well. People like, you know, diplomats. You know, Jada Kiss, you know, uh, Nas, okay. huge fan of Nas, it's a shorty stuff like that, kind of helped me mold into my love, you know, ideology a little bit. Okay, so, so tell, tell us what, what was it like growing up in Humble Park, man? Man, you know, <laughs> some, some of the best of the best, seen some of the worst of the worst, you know, uh, been a part of some things not too proud of, been a part of some things that I'm very proud of at the end of the day, you know, dangerous, but, you know, once you find your way to navigate, you know, it's really not that bad. Yeah, I know. I had relatives like that stayed over there. It was like, hey, see y'all on the holidays. Man, that's how it is. Is that when I want to join you? Like, yo, I'm gonna park in front. You better crack that front door. I'm coming in. Nah, more like send my plate. Send your plate on. <laughs> so you got the new you got the new video out. We're gonna be spinning out Urban Grind TV. That's the dope. joint is called Visions. It's out right now, man. Tell us what was your motivation? What was the the theme behind that? So when I did Visions, I was originally somewhere, you know, Minnesota, just touring the city, trying to link up. You know, I had some family down there as well. But um, I was in a situation where I found myself like, OK, everything coming together smooth. Right. But I started to notice, like, you know, I originally went down there with my cousin, you know what I'm saying? And then he basically got me, you know, associated with some of his people. So we kind of had like a group thing. We kind of moved as a unit, if you will. Right. But I looked up and I noticed, like, little cuz got locked up. His guys start getting locked up. Then it got to the point where, you know, we was together every single day. So now it's like I'm riding by myself because, you know, they some in the system. Some got stuff going on, so they can't really be outside how they need to. So, 
you know, my mind state at that point was regardless of what's going on around me, what the influences are, I have to keep going. I got to make it happen, you know what I'm saying? Regardless if I got, a, you know, 100 people behind me or, you know, four people behind me, I got to keep pushing and keep grinding. So, you know, my idea of that was, you know, I got a vision for what I'm trying to do, and I'm going to stick to that vision no matter what. So, you know, I just put it in the music. That's like, that's the determination. Let me tell you something, man. Like, I think it's really easy when you facing adversity and you in a, in a tough environment, it's, it's just, I feel like the most easiest thing it offers you is to adapt to the point where you feel like, I'm just gonna submit, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna become one with the environment, I'm not gonna do better, I'm gonna let this tell me this is all it is. But when you take grasp of that, and you put your foot just like an inch in front of it, you could see like such a major difference. Cause like I, I came from like a background where the neighborhood was okay, but it seemed like it was rough, and it seemed like it was influencing people not to be where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. Like my neighborhood, and that's not a diss, because I have a lot of people there that I, OGs that I dearly look up to that, that helped me out along the way, but it's like they didn't offer or none of the advice from the area said, hey, you can go chase your goals, because it it's not the same what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? So anytime I see somebody that comes from those kind of adversity situations and they trying to make it and they pushing themselves and they giving the best version of themselves, even if it's the bad things, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always salute stuff like that because it ain't always pretty. Man. I, think, I think that's a part of, like, every hood in the, sh- yeah. in the city. If you grew up in a hood, you know, the hood, you, you get off work, you hanging with your homies, you know, you doing a bunch of nothing stuff. And it takes a strong person to kind of step back, go within and kind of dig for that gift that you have. And then after having that gift and finding that gift, you got to pursue it. Definitely, for you sure. Know? And that's what it's about. She ain't never lied about that, bro. So I, I, I salute that. So let me let me ask a question. So um, cause I, this always gets me. So okay, you got um the pandemic that happened last year, right? Okay. And I, I, for me, <laughs> it hit me hard because I'm really big on shows. Okay. I do a lot of shows. You know what I'm saying paid gigs and all that. So it kind of sucked. You know what I'm saying? Like from that up until now, mm-hmm. like how has it how has it been to you for how how it's like put a clamps on everything, that certain things are starting to open back up slightly. Like how is that affecting you? Okay. Physically as an artist. Okay. Just generally speaking, I like to look at things like every time something go left, you gonna have certain things that's always still going right. So I kinda looked at it like it's opportunity as well, right? With the pandemic going on, it seemed like it's more people that's actually spending time doing like you know stuff like online tv videos entertainment people that's not actually at work doing the regular stuff that they usually do they got an extra set of time to just do whatever so i'm just trying to captivate all that so you know if you got extra time on your hands that's a perfect opportunity to present whatever you're trying to do and for the people who got that extra time as well you know it's just perfect timing in my opinion straight up I ain't gonna lie, I cried for a couple of seconds. <laughs> some, some concerts that was gonna be major, we had to cancel them. I was like, oh God, no. <laughs> but no, I, I guess time is everything with, with them situations, man. I um, What inspires you, like, to still, to still, because when you look up, it's so many people from our city that's, that's, that's making it. It's so many people from our city that's getting noticed, and then there is probably twice as much combined that may not never get that recognition, you know what I'm saying? So how does Magnif keep his energy going? How do you keep logs on your fire, you know what I'm saying? To try to get your name up there with the greats and get your recognition up there with the ones that's getting it. I mean, it's the people, you know, the people around me also, you know, my fan base as well. I feel like, you know, I draw energy from them the same way they get it from me. It's a reciprocal vibe. So sometimes when I'm feeling like, man, this might not be going how I need to, or this might not be going as fast as I like it, you know, sometimes randomly people just hit me up like, man, you know that one song you f- or just put out? Yeah, I'm feeling that. Or that one old song that you had, I'm still rocking to that. I was just playing that earlier. So, you know, I get the feedback from the people and they give me power. It's like motivation, you know, give me more juice. So what, what type of artist influences you? Anybody that's like um, have a, a self-made vibe, anybody who's generally organic. intelligent, not only organic, but somebody who have the the confidence to take an independent approach if it's necessary, if that make any sense. So you got some people who's striving to get signed. Then you got some people that's striving to just really get their cell phone and put other people on. And make they not re- Right, exactly. They're not really scared to invest in themselves and make stuff happen. You know, people like Gucci Man, Bird Man, yeah. Money Man, people that's, you know, self-sufficient. Grinding, man. grinding. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'll be motivated by that. That's what's up. That's now, what's now up. we chopped it up a couple of times, and I think we even touched on this, but uh, you, you rocking the unk. Uh, on your hand, you got the Ayara, 
Uh, so I, that's like more about the spirituality, tight. right? So tell tell us like you know, are you spiritual? Uh, does that influence your music or your style? Or, you know, and what's your feelings on that? Absolutely, yeah. So as a kid, um, you know, no shade to nobody, no religion, nothing like that. But my grandpa always told me that you know Jesus died on the cross, right? But the unk is actually a symbol of life. So, yeah. you know, I like to be, you know, in the land of the living. I like to be in harmony, be in sync. You know, I did a little research on what it means, and it just all coincides to, you know, the reason why I got it. I like to, you know, bring that breath of life into my music as well, if you will, because once again, you know, energy is just transitioning energy, you know, from one person to the next. So I try to, you know, keep it on all levels. And also, it's also the the male and the female form as well. So depending yeah. on who you ask, there's different interpretations. For sure. So I, do, is there anybody that you listen to, um, like, do you feel has, like, that kind of vibe in their music? Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, once again, man, I'll, you know, give a shout out to Money Man. He one of those people. Um, one artist I recently started kind of rocking with. When I say recent, I'm talking about within the past four years, but... Growing up, not so much, but see Don Hancho, he a shorty. Oh, he, yeah. But shorty be taking off. Yeah, 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 shorty go crazy. Everything he do, you can kind of see the progress and the elevation in the music. And just as an artist just to artist, craft. that's one of the things I'm striving for as well, just to be able to see growth over that's time, sure. see that development, you feel me? I yeah. see that in shorty, for sure. And just the, the fact that you mentioned his name and we already know who he is. Like, I've been I've been seeing him. Homegrown. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's like, that's... that's yes, sir. When you could ride down the artist block and feel like how bro was saying, you kind of feel they painted then you see them in a different light I do something to me and let you know give you that that hope like you know it's possible you could do it too you feel yeah me? you could dig your way out you know for sure I gotta okay so you know I have to ask this question in a minute because it seemed like uh I think people be a uh, program to make the response out of sportsmanship but I can tell from like a lot of how you express your background and how you express you know what I'm saying your, your driving force to call it the form of your music that's where we get like, like I straight from in the pen so like give me what 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 do you know right now be honest to the to the viewers what you know makes you want to i ain't gonna ask the situation what makes you sometimes be like this may not be worth it but then the other part of you be like nah i know what i'm doing this for because i wouldn't feel like you a human if yeah. you wouldn't be so deep in this artistry if you didn't have things that you look at and be like that may that may be advice towards it made me feel like i don't I, what am i doing this for okay for sure then what am i doing this for moments i got you so one of those moments for me is that like when i put out my ep one feature make sure y'all go check it out right it's fire not just as i'm saying it but you know take a look for yourself but like when i put it out one of the first things i start thinking about is okay i need videos okay i need promo okay i need this and that and it's really all costing money you know what i mean so for you to reach in your pocket and invest in your dreams you know that's one of them humps everybody got to kind of get over so sometimes I look at it like I got to do this, do that, do that. And I'm just looking at the total. I'm like, man, all right, let me just do it. Because once again, I'm invested in me, so why yeah. not? And you still got to put together that complete package. And yeah. you got to make it, make sure that it's polished. And in order to do that, you got to spend money. Exactly. So my reason for asking that is like, now you see how you just said all that? You got to do this, you got to do that. But then you be like, this is me. And I want the best version of me while I'm doing something I believe in. Yes, sir. Remember at a time when we felt like we had to get signed for somebody else to get behind us and do all that? Right. Remember that? Remember mm -hmm. feel like we had to like wait for somebody to, to, to notice us to want to do that? Mm -hmm. You see the power, you know what I'm saying, the creativity and the power of ownership where you can do it amongst yourself? Absolutely. So it's like, man, at some part, I think we, we're not we, but this, 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 um, this wave of music and this wave of artists, I tend to get lazy on them parts. That's why it's a, it's a lot of music that's out here, but people are not taking it to the next level because they're not taking ownership in everything that needs to be done. We just want a reaction. We want the long-term investment. But the thing is, you can't get to, to the end of the race unless you run a race. And, and running a race, that means you got to invest in yourself. That means you got to study. You got to better your craft. That means you got to put together a complete package so you could grow. And you got to have that paperwork in order because yeah. you can make it to the end, but if you don't get no bag Talk at the him. end, ain't no point in Talk having him, it. It's a lot of major artists right now. As a matter of right fact, now. they could tap into your book, too. Yeah, it's a lot of major Shout artists out. right now, like the the YGs and the uh, Taylor Swifts who, <laughs> who got these, these, these super hit records that just still making millions and millions of dollars right now. And they didn't even have rights to them or don't even got the ownership to them and like that like i but, just was discovering that and <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna run it back so they could go ahead and check out wally book so that's uh 
Music is my business, yeah. the startup strategy Talk guide to, to the music business. They can check it out at musicbusinessebook.com. I kind of go over a little bit of that stuff, um, kind of break it down. But you know, there's there's 12 different registrations for every song. So you're talking 12 stream, 12 revenue streams per song. Giving you that knowledge, right? So most people just think, oh, I did the I did the BMI or I did the ASCAP. I'm good. Be like you left, you left 11 out. So like it, you know, and believe me, the paperwork is not the exciting part. That's not the part where you're in the studio and you're like, oh, I'm doing paperwork. But guess what? That's gonna get you the bag at the end of the exactly. day. Exactly. So to me, that's that is the exciting part. Um, and so just people gotta remember that just to own it. So like five years from now, you know, where do you want to be and how do you want people to 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 think when they think Mac Niff? Like, where do you want them to? What kind of impression do you want to give them? I want to give them. The impression of me not just being a dope artist, but someone who can actually provide platforms for other upcoming artists. I want to be the one that, you know, have to go through the experience, make it happen for myself, use myself as an example, but also use my platforms to kind of usher in other people who just, you know, they got the energy, they got the raw talent, but they don't really have the knowledge to, you know, go forward with what they're trying to do. I want to be one of the people that help provide that knowledge to them. Now, are you looking at uh, staying indie, or is this something that you're trying to get, like, get a deal and go with, like, a bigger entity? My goal is to really stay indie, you know, for me to really group up with a bigger entity that had to make sense. But as of right now, you know, I feel like we don't really too too much need the gatekeepers, which would be traditionally the record labels. You know what I mean? It's cool, you know, for the connections and everything like that. But for the most part, I think that we have a, a direct-to-consumer marketing platform so you Absolutely. can get straight to the people. So I'm just trying to take advantage of that see how far I can go with it. So now I feel like, you know, when I bring my part to the table, you know, if a label talking the same language and they have something, you know, that makes sense to bring to the table with me and match what I got going, then, you know, it all makes sense ultimately. Now, what advice would you get to like another artist? Let's say they're breaking into the business, yeah. Um, you know, and they're kind of hesitant about investing in themselves or kind of making the serious moves. They just want to snatch a beat off YouTube and go crazy. Yeah. What advice would you give to somebody like that? The rawest fashion that you can give it to them. Right. <laughs> gotcha. So check it out, right? You know, you spent X amount of money buying clothes. You know what I mean? Drinking, trying to impress females, smoking, going to the club, right? You could take a percentage of that and just, if you really believe in yourself, why not just spend it on yourself? Give it a shot. Because all this other money is really liabilities. You're not getting anything back. So Fact. this is one thing you at least got a shot at getting something back if you do it the right way. So why not take a shot at it? That's that's real. That's real important. And at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're investing in yourself. And, and that's like you can you know you can bet on a lot of things in life but you'll never go wrong betting on yourself and, so. and you have to spend money to make money exactly i mean that's real talk like you can't just expect to like grow and you're not investing in yourself investing in yourself is getting the knowledge that you need you know finding somebody else that's on the same path that you're on and linking up and and, and kind of finding that finding your own niche you know i use that analogy all the time when i talk to people and they tell me like nah i'm not really putting no money into my stuff i'd be like well if you're a mechanic, my dad's a mechanic, right? That right downstairs, we got the whole body shop. Now, if you're a mechanic, you go to school or you're self-taught, you're going to invest in a lot of tools, lifts, yeah. equipment, tens of thousands of dollars just to work on cars. So if you have an opportunity to create intellectual property, which will pay you for generations, you know, because the copyright's good 75 years after the death of the authors, uh, the author. So 75 years after you're gone, that copyright holder will make generate income. So if you're going to create generational wealth, why would Spend you not much. invest in yourself? And why do you think that you can get away with not investing in yourself? Because as you know, labels don't do artist development no more. They're not doing that. They are looking for somebody that's got something viral, something quick. Or somebody that has made them proper moves to get it going. But if they you hope, market, if you market the right way, you could you could set it towards the demographics <clears throat> and the age group that you're trying to market to. All you have to do is sit down, study, figure it out, and or hire somebody that's able to do it that has the knowledge, like Urban Grind TV. You know, we can help develop you things like that. But at the end of the day, you have to d dump that energy into yourself. That goes. That goes right along with what I was going to say. Like they're hoping 
that you got a hot song that's generating so much and they're praying to God that you don't have half the intelligence so they can just take it from you. Yeah. They're going to run into a brick wall when they figure out that you got the game somewhat down pack and they got to sit down and negotiate with you versus, you know what I'm you something to sign to them. Especially when you're using the correct verbiage, direct to consumer and things of that nature. They know, okay, this person probably knows a little something. Man, let me sit, let me sit in front of a label, right? And they get talking that crazy stuff, right? I'm, <laughs> I look, I'm going to throw them off because you don't like to be judgmental. I'm going to wear the, the OG dog is look. <laughs> With the head down with the barrettes. As soon as they get to talking, I'm just going to turn around and just say Wally right there. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got you, G. I'm gonna be right. I was going to say, I'll be right there with you, bro. But you, you was in it. You was in it. And that's important to have representation. I mean, like, you don't cut your own hair. You probably don't do your own taxes. And there's a lot of things you don't do. But why would you trust, you know, somebody that doesn't have experience, you know, to make important decisions like that? So I, I just think... It's only right. And that's just keeping it real with yourself. Like, I don't know everything. That's what I, you know, I read every day. I could, I'm continuing to learn. And, and I think just think that's important in, in the music we do. So is there anybody you want to shout out, man? Anybody you're looking to work for, working with, like on the production side, other artists and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, let me shout out my producer. So with one feature, I got like one guy who made 90% of the beats. That's Chris Cha uh, Chris Trap Chambers. Chris Chambers for short. Okay. That's my boy, man. It's up that we locked in. He be sending me beats when I'm asleep. So I got to shout out to you. Shout out to little bro Marco. Shout out to my family. Shout out to my OG. And, you know, everybody rocking with me. I'm rocking with y'all, man. And, so, and one so more time, but tell them about what the project you got out right now, the videos, the songs, and okay. where they can find it at. Okay, one feature, that's the EP. It's out. It's fire. Visions, you can find that on my YouTube. That's at Magnif, E-N-T, M-A-C, space, N-I-F, space, E-N-T. Website, M-A-C, uh, N-I-F, E-N-T, dot com, Magnif, E-N-T, dot com. But just a couple of songs, Visions. I explained that one. Needless to explain anymore, but go check it out so you can kind of get a little bit more insight and data what I'm talking about. On and the they'll song catch that on Urban Grind for like at least the next month. You right? already know. Shout out to Urban yeah. Grind for sure, for sure. Uh, GGG, Gucci Glizzy Gang. I got the video. We working on that. That's about to come out shortly. That sounds like that's going to be dope. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, no cap. Like when I look at your stuff, one thing I kind of like caught on your vibe is that like you had like a, a rock and roll type of energy a little bit in some of your stuff and i rock with that in ggg it got like a, a rock and roll type of beat in a sense so man it's it's gonna be super less outside of my comfort zone because i mainly do rap you know i grew up off like the true uh, boom bap type of beat you know once again back to the new york you know those type of beats those type yeah. of energies those type of feels primarily for the most part but okay. to home and make a certain look out for that that's deep that's a little different that's very diverse that's more personal that's from the heart it's about you know you know, a little situation. You want to figure out, you know, what it's talking about? Go check that out. Other than that, run through, go crazy. No pad, no pen off the top. Just pure energy, you know, pure art. You feel me? But for the most part, go check them out. So we're, if people want to follow you on social media, download your music, book you for a gig, do a collabo, how can they get in tune with you? Just check me out, magnifent.com. M-A-C-N-I-F-E-N-T.com. Right there, I got all my handles, all the platforms. We talking from Snapchat to Facebook to Instagram, you know, whatever your preference, man. You go find it. Go check me out, iTunes, okay. all that. Spotify. You going to jump in the cypher with us later? Come on, let's do it. All right, you going to give us a little sneak peek, man. Okay. When yeah. we get back. This is Urban Grind Radio, my man Mac Niff in the building, live from the Windy City Smoky Studios. A Book Carter, he goes, hey, 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 hey. You know it, hey, hey. It's magnificent, people, and I'm over here vibing and tuned in to Urban Grind Radio. Tune in with me, it's only right. Thanks for clicking on the link. My name is Wally Locker III. I'm the executive producer of Urban Grind Television and author of Music Is My Business, a startup strategy guide to the music business. I've been in the industry for over 18 years, working with artists, entertainers, producers, record executives, and more. I put together a brand new strategy guide just for you on how to navigate the music business. I'm going to talk about your vision, about your commitments, about your dreams, building the supreme team, and more. Also, how to fund your business. So all you need you to do is hit the link below, put in your email address. We're going to send you the newsletter. We're going to give you some free bonus content, and you also got an exclusive offer. It's all free. Just click on the link below. Put in your email address and get in tune. It's Urban Grind TV. Music is my business. Let's go. Hello. 
hello, hello. It's Tawana Divine of Divine Treats with the Z. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I prepared a Cajun seafood pasta. You can find many dishes like this on my website, which is divinetreatswithaz.com. I also prepare meals that will help you lose weight. Low calorie, low carb, low in sugar. Again, divinetreats.com. Brother, we gonna come off like the mob. You understand what I'm saying? Magnificent people. Focus, yeah. Like a scope or a lens, yeah. Only got a few friends, yeah. Count the money and grand, I'm focused. Yeah, yeah. Hit the stoop fuck a club. When I do fuck it up, nothing under a dub. Optical vision, I gotta be focused. I run up a bag and get fly like a locust. The beef disappear like hocus pocus. I'm sending the op on the trip, you stroger. Early morning, I'm up with no focus on target. I aim and hit up your soldiers. I back up the block like I'm shopping at Kroger's. My coca A1, your cola is bogus. Watch me pull up in the coupe of your dreams. Open your eyes and it is what it seems. Pull up and be off like me for speed. It came out the mud, but get it so clean. The bitches turn begging me at Medulla. She nice to me, but to you, she Medusa. Going off the perky while counting the moolah. It's turning her own, she won't come a sutra. Lizzie on me when the karma come back. Stick to the plan like I'm a thumbtack. When shit happens, it's how you react. I be on auto, why they call me Mac? Automatic, autopilot, auto focus into this climate. Glass ceiling, still climbing, still stroking. After she climbs, focused. Yeah, yeah. Like a scope or a lens. Only got a few friends. Count the money and grand, I'm focused. Yeah. Hit the stoop, fuck a club. When I do fuck it up, nothing under a dub, I'm focused. Yeah, I was born in February, hard cold this February. It's cold world, so it's necessary, I'm focused. Yeah, only love for my family and plug. In the drop, I'm still re up. In the drop, I'm still re up. I beat up that pot like a UFC match, no lottery ticket, I need all my scratch. No love for your bitch, I put her on the track. Buy her some at max, then make her run track. Circle of motion until it come back. At the same time, that's her in the crack. I'm in the field like I need a sack. I line up your man like the quarterback. You owe me to keep it, don't pay me, you cheated. I might blow you down, why you think that I keep it? I don't do loans. For that reason, mercy for those who related through semen. Hard body, straight from the semen. Faith in my ground like a church to a deacon. Remember them nights, game back in the it All year round, no conscience for seasons. Four seasons, counting and trapping. Blowing the bag, then right back to stacking. Back up that work with that motor and passion. Always on go while you always relaxing. Back it right up, then right back in traffic. Something from nothing, what I call magic. Cool, fully loaded, choppers and gadgets. Sleep with my drone while you sleep with the Mac. I'm focused. Yeah. Like a scope or a lens. Only got a few friends. Count the money and grand, I'm focused. Yeah. Hit the stoop, fuck a club. When I do fuck it up, nothing under a dub, I'm focused. Yeah. I was born in February. Hard cold is February. It's cold world, so it's necessary. I'm focused. Yeah. Only love for my family and plug. In the drop, I'm still re up. In the drop, I'm still re up. Black hole, 2020, mm -hmm. I ain't Legendary playing, listen, I know about what I say you've got, coming from Britain like an England squad, fans go mad when a single drops, who's on my level, not a single one, I don't do L's, I just win non-stop, I ain't on pip, I don't tip that box, I just ride round in a whip that's hot, man I came from the bottom, I'm an inch on the top, I'm sat in this chair, after the throne, cause I am the heir, people are amazed, sit back and they stare, cause I am unique and this rap and it's rare, I'm hot on a song, man I just done when they call me a monk Get on the phone, one call and it's on Thrown in the boot just for warring with John That's like cold, some call me a don Some call me a prick, some call me a knob I don't give a shit, you can do what you want Some said I can't do it but I'm proving I'm wrong I'm a boss, see me roll through the moss Man get jealous from the dough that I got Know I look fresh with the clothes that I floss And the diamonds glow when I show you my watch I'm stacking my cash, investing in shit while you trapping your stash Laughing cause you man are average at rap And I'm laughing you fast cause I master my craft I damage your track, all that I need is a van and a mask No North Wales to money and back home, roll with me while I'm
Urban Grind Radio, man. We back. It's your boy DJ P1. Feel good to say that. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. And I'm A-Boy Carter. Not in the high seat today. I'm loving it. <laughs> it make a difference. It's pressure over there. I'm we, telling you. It's like Shaq shooting free throws. Bro, Two seconds left to go in the game. Enough about us, man. We got a special guest with us, man. Tell the people. They heard your voice. You, you've been tapping in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make, it, make it official. Make it what official. up? It's Chicago J. Chicago J. I go by Chicago J. Say that three times so you remember. Chicago. Well, hey, it's like some like, Candyman stuff going to happen. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, man. you know. Yeah, you say it three times, I pop up in the studio, <laughs> in the booth. <laughs> what happened when you said three times you were around? Did you get out of there? Like, nah, nah. Uh, I'll test the water. He's What's just, going on? I don't on? know what happened, shit. We never tested. Really? Oh. Already. Oh, that, that segment. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes your segment. Thank y'all for coming. We'll I, be back. No. I had a good show. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, KD. <laughs> I'm off the set, Chicago <laughs> J. You have, you have now met me. Hey, hey, you got the important part here. Make sure people know. <laughs> right. But what? Hey, what do you do, Chicago J? Let the people know what you do. I do everything. Oh, I good do, catch. Good I catch. Do everything. I do everything. I'm I'm mainly a rapper. Okay. Uh, so that's I guess my forte. Um, been doing that since I was a little kid, nine years old. Uh, I'm a father as well. Father to a three year old, beautiful little girl. Okay. Um. But I, I I make beats. I edit my own music videos. I I do everything. No, definitely, definitely. In this in, in the entertainment business, you guys you know you guys yeah. find multiple hats. You definitely do. Like like um, let me chime in on that real quick, Pete. Um, yeah. I met him uh like almost a year plus ago. Okay. Yeah, like Out on the ground doing half. multiple shows. You know what I'm saying different cities, different towns. We're bumping into him, slamming shows. Um, it's it's very rare, and I'm really big on performing. Me, Miranda, we really big on that. True. It's it's, it's it's a it's a different kind of power when you can command the crowd. Ju- it's just one person, and one thing I've noticed about his performances all the time is he grabs the crowd by itself. Like it don't matter what. Like one for instance, we was at the Forge, and that was a real hood crowd. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like and I remember, people yeah. Or more there, yeah. And I remember when he got up there. You know what I'm saying? It was one of the crowds that probably they ain't acceptable to you if, if they ain't feeling like they don't even you, know who I am. Right. You know what I'm like, saying? I mean, he got up there, the shirt off, had the blonde hair. Right. It went crazy though. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Got their attention. You know what I'm saying? So it was like ah. Nice. So I, 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 J-Hot, you know what I'm saying? I, I rock bro. I was like, nobody know me here, but all of y'all gonna love me. Definitely, man. And yeah. he did his thing. Like, That's how I look you know at what's it. so crazy about it? Cause you gotta promote yourself like something, right? So my man's crazy. He walking through the club with security and everything. So to people who don't know him, they 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 thinking Looking they, like they thinking like who is this? Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Then look. So shout, he, out, shout out KC Bodyguard. Yeah, Make KC, sure y'all check man. out KC Bodyguard. <laughs> yeah, we had a yeah. big, yeah, we yeah, big KC. Yeah, we had a big KC. Shout out my boy T Smooth. He walking around okay. there with Big KC. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You okay. met KC? Yeah. yeah we yeah, came up here. That's yeah, the homie. He came up and talked to us a couple get, times. I get in tune with him. I've been in the club with him a lot. So look, it's so funny because now all the, the other people looking and stuff like, who is that? He comes slide to the table with us. So all eyes on us. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. You know how that good, man. But definitely. Yeah, females were going crazy in there too. They were just like, who, who, who is this? Who is this? Who are y'all? Right. They, they were trying to find, figure out who the cameraman was, too. Right, right, They're right. Like, man, I want to know everybody. So where does your showmanship come from? Like, because that's that's a showman tactic there. So, like, what, what, what do you attribute that creativity to? Man, I watched a lot of movies, you know, okay. a lot of Troy, a lot of 300, you know. Oh. So, oh, yeah, like, like, we're talking like, uh, like I was talking to John over here. I was like, I like going for that cinematic stuff. So mm. if I'm walking into a show, it's to me, I'm just like, all right, how can I make this a movie? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'm like, I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to go there just to perform. I'm mm-hmm. trying to walk in there and be like, all right, how can I create some entertainment, not just rap? So you thinking about the whole experience? Yeah. Then, so yeah. okay. All right, Before cool. I see yourself in it, the moment, grabbing it, that like that. I that, mean, a lot of it is is like, uh, what 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 do the actors do? What is that called? Uh, where they're just doing everything on the spot. I, I don't know why I can't. Improv. Improv, Improv. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. a lot of it, like, I visualize before I go in there, but then you don't know who you're going to bump into. I didn't know I was going to see him at a few shows, you right. know, like, so as soon as, like, I, I guess I, I see certain people or, or you know, I, I, I bump into certain people, I just I just know how to kind of move in the room for some reason, just naturally. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm like energy guy, I, I can sense it, man. Let me ask you a question, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, I'm very nosy, like, real, real nosy. I like to get information about I, my I haven't people's. met that side of you. <laughs> well, well, this is what the platform is for. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dissect, you know what I'm saying? So, what's the representation of the symbol, you know what I'm saying, that I see, that you wear? Damn, everybody wants to know that. Yeah, yeah, let's, get, a, let's get into Jay. Super long story, but if I could cut, like, a five-hour conversation into, like, two minutes, uh, 
somewhere along the way and going through my life and just meeting all types of different people, getting burned, you know, we just talked about how the industry is real cutthroat, especially in Chicago. It's really crazy. Man. So um, I guess just meeting all types of different types of people and being in all types of different environments, it really uh, woke me up to the idea of basically bumping into people who aren't who they're telling you they are. Mm. So my eye is really kind of like me putting on the front of my face, letting people know, like, you can't fool me. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha, Gene Gray or instantly, like, yeah, I'm looking straight through it. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. I, like, I hear what you're saying, but I'm paying attention to how you're moving. Mm -hmm. I like I, any anybody could say something, but nobody can, nobody can fake that movement. You know, body Definitely. language is a whole different thing. Definitely, like, no, I'm big on that. Like, I'm, I'm real big on the energy, the third eye, filling the room. I could probably walk in the room, you know what I'm saying, and make a, like, make a presence, feel the presence, detect the presence without even, yeah, like, yeah. so. Like, you I'm got to. You got to, especially doing all this that we're doing. How do you translate that into your artistry as far as music making? My music, it's, it's like, uh, around a lot of trauma, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of ex bad experiences that I've had in my life. And the way all of that plays into it is in my music, I'm really telling my story of, uh, of going, of walking that path, you know, and, right. and bumping into those people. And I mean, those people are like, it's not like I'm dropping names or anything, but if you listen to the music, you're like, okay, I get it. I see what he's saying. You know, right. like paint pictures, very yeah, pictures. Yeah. I'm, I'm all about painting pictures. If I, if I get you to see something, I get you to feel it. If I get you to feel it, then I'm in, I'm in there. So digging into your creative process a little more. I, uh, do you produce everything that you rap on, or Not how everything. does that work? Okay. No, I don't. I don't produce everything. Uh, I have various producers that okay. I work with. Um, I tend to work with a lot of producers. I, I've noticed, like in Europe, there's a lot of there's a lot of dope. It like, is God. Oh, God Europe's is. real crazy, man. They 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 have a lot of powerful music influence out there. That's it not even crazy. it's crazy. And not even acknowledged yet. Like them them guys like really got a lot. They don't throw, they don't throw Germany real. respect. They're like, not they, and they, respect, they 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 want to network with you. They reach out, try to. And out. they love American artists. Yeah, they do. They they send me packages through the Gmail. You know what I'm saying like free packages. Like hell, I'm saying rap off this, spit off this, and. When it comes to rap music, you yeah. know, everybody's thinking about the American rappers, you know? Right. So nobody's, like, looking overseas, you know? So those guys, they're trying to, like, like, hey, we're yeah, here, this too. is the top. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is the top of the food chain. Like, mm -hmm. wherever you at musically, America is the top of And the they food. love Chicago. And Chicago is They that. love Chicago. They love, I so love. let me ask you this. So you've traveled quite a bit. What's some of the places you've been, you know? I've been to Florida, California, okay. Atlanta, okay. Um, sh Iowa. Good catch. Michigan. <laughs> Best uh, so let me, let me ask you this. California is my favorite. I, this is like one of my favorite questions because I just, you know, I love when I meet artists that travel and get to see other cities. Yeah. Like, how would you compare other cities' grind to Chicago's grind? To be honest, man, there's no place like Chicago. Okay. Hey, hey. There's just, ah. I, don't, I don't know, there's something about the energy here in Chicago. Everybody's real cold and strong, you know, like, don't get me wrong. I mean, you go other places and everyone's super friendly and everyone's like super open to everything. But I just feel like if you can make it in Chicago, you can make it anywhere on the planet. Man, say that one more That's time true. for the little people in the back. True. If you can make it in Chicago, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> there you go. Baby. If you make it in Chicago, I promise you, you're like, you're top of the food chain. You are battle tested. I think if you make it to Chicago, you can survive Afghanistan. That's so what's that's crazy? What you got out now? Let us know what you got out now and uh, where we can check it out. Uh, I draw. I dropped two mixtapes last year in 2020. Uh, one's titled 227 Flows. Another one's titled 333 Flows. Um, and those are basically based around, like I said, you know, I I, I go into a lot into mental health. I go a lot into uh, telling stories about. Um, you know, my daughter, my family, you know, my friends, enemies, you know, everything. So you can check that out. But I also have an album I've been working on for the last two years. I'm trying to get everything perfectly right. Okay. And that's going to be the one that will be released on Spotify, Apple Music. And that's going to be my money maker right there. Oh, that's what's up, man. When can we expect that? Hopefully not in two more years. Okay. <laughs> hey, I, 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 I like that. Take so, time with the crowd. Man, it's like that when it comes to that, man. Yeah, but, you know, like, I like to push out music. So I'm just pushing out, pushing out song after song after song. You go into my, my, my phone, everybody will tell you, like, my, my, my girl hates this about me. She's like, dude, you got, like, 500 songs. And I know you can connect to this. Mm -hmm. You got, like, 500. Right. And you have three <laughs> songs online. <laughs> you know what I, I swear, mean? So, I, yeah. I swear the vote is, like, a thousand. Man. But out there, it's, it's so precious. You just want everything to be right. Man. Yeah, you just want everything. When you so, move to a certain level, you just you want everything to be. Yeah. And you know I'm saving the gems for me, so. Okay. 
right. Well, how Us. do we follow you until we uh, get get in tune <laughs> with the gems, brother? Be- best way to reach reach me is shit uh, on Sound on SoundCloud. I didn't swear. I was yes. I was gonna say in Chicago. Um, <laughs> this but, part gonna get cut off. But uh, be- best way to reach me is on SoundCloud. Uh, Instagram, Instagram. I'm 100 percent on Instagram. So I just set up my Instagram like two years ago. So that's like been my like main thing. Okay. That's All right, word. Well then, uh, y'all heard him, man. Make sure y'all go check my man Chicago J out. Uh, he out at Urban Grind and got 500 songs that you know. Let's put a little pressure on him. Tell him drop some more of them things out out the phone. Right. right. Definitely you is, know? man. So hit him up online and. Uh, yeah. At my performances though, you could check everything. I, I don't I don't unrelease anything in performances. You'll hear all my unreleased stuff. Bat them up, bat them up. Well, I like that because you know that's not permanent. You know, like if I release that on a performance, like what are you gonna catch? Like video footage? True. Hey, yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, that's what's up. It's a safe way to do it. So stay tuned. Uh, tune in to Chicago J. Over at A Book. We'll be right back. Hey, hey, hey. How you doing? This is Chicago J, one of the hottest artists in Chicago. Check me out on Urban Grind Radio.